How are you going to make reservations to dine in space? When will you be able to see Tafiti up close in person? And is there a way to swim alongside the dolphins in the Epcot aquariums? We're covering the answers to all of these questions and many more in our ultimate 2023 Epcot guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog and today we're covering everything you're going to need and want to know about Epcot before your 2023 vacation, which that's a lot. Epcot is currently in the midst of its historic transformation and we've already seen a lot of changes take place here over the last couple years. Now, Epcot has been broken up into four distinct neighborhoods. World Showcase takes you into and around 11 different country pavilions. World Celebration is at the front of the park and houses the main Epcot icon itself, Spaceship Earth. World Nature holds the Land and Seas pavilions, and World Discovery has rides, restaurants, and attractions that look toward the future, meaning you can expect to find lots of space and intergalactic offerings. But the changes are continuing on throughout 2023, and you're going to need to know what's new, what's coming, and what's to become of all those construction walls that we might actually miss when they finally come down. No, we won't. This Ultimate Guide is part of a series of 2023 Ultimate Guides we're creating for each of the parks we do every year. So make sure to check out our Ultimate Guide 2023 playlist on YouTube to see our first video of the series, which is all about the tricks and tips around Magic Kingdom. And tune back in for our soon to be released guides all about Disney's Hollywood Studios and Disney's Animal Kingdom. Before we get started with today's video, just know that you can have this entire Ultimate Epcot Guide list sent directly to your inbox by sending us your email at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Epcot 23. We'll get a PDF of everything we're talking about today sent your way immediately so you can access it easily at any time. But for now, let's start this video by looking at all the shiny new offerings Epcot has to offer because who doesn't love kicking off a video ooing and eyeing? Epcot shook things up in 2022 with a rather groundbreaking new ride for not just Epcot, but all of Disney World. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is located in the World Discovery section of the park and has a lot of firsts for Disney World. Cosmic Rewind is the first Epcot roller coaster, the first Disney backwards launching coaster, and the first Marvel-based ride in Disney World, which will take you on an intergalactic adventure with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Cosmic Rewind is also one of the longest indoor coasters ever built, but we still love you too, Rock and Roller Coaster. So what can you expect from a ride centered around some of the wackiest characters from the MCU? Shenanigans, that's what. Part of those include riding aboard a family-friendly Omni-Coaster, which means that the ride vehicles, the Star Jumper vehicles, spin a full 360 degrees on the track while traveling at high speeds. Though not everyone experiences motion sickness on this ride, it is important to note that some guests do. So if you think that the screens and turning motion will push you over the edge, please plan ahead and take a non-drowsy medication to help settle your stomach before you ride. Another fun part about Cosmic Rewind is its queue line, which houses the first Otherworld Pavilion for Epcot, the Wonders of Xandar Pavilion. Inside the queue, expect to see the Galaxarium, a planetarium-like exhibition where you can learn about the differences and similarities between the galaxies of Earth, Terra, and Xandar. Also, there's a turkey leg hidden in there, and here it is. The Xandar Gallery, where Xandarians teach us Terrans, Earth Dwellers, about their world, their people, and their advanced technologies, as well as Xandar's protectors and heroes. And you'll see the Phase Chamber, where, well, maybe I'll let you see that one for yourself. After all, it's quite the magic trick. But one of the most fun parts of the new Cosmic Rewind coaster is its randomized soundtrack. There are six different songs you could potentially hear through the course of your ride, including September, Disco Inferno, Conga, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, which is obviously the best song, I Ran, and One Way or Another. This soundtrack won't be the same every time you ride it, and you won't know which track you'll hear each time you ride until you actually blast off. Around the holidays, however, Cosmic Rewind gets a seasonal song overlay featuring a medley of holiday tunes including Run Run Rudolph, Deck the Halls, and Jingle Bells, which have a little bit of a change to the song lyrics for the Guardians. We heard Rudolph replaced with Rocket, and of course Groot has to get a word or three in. Other than that though, the ride is the same. We'll talk more about the extra steps you're going to need to take to get into the Cosmic Rewind queue currently, but before we get to that, let's talk about another new feature that entered into the Epcot scene this year, and that's Connections Cafe and Eatery. This is a brand new, fast, casual, quick service restaurant in Epcot's world celebration. On the cafe side, you can order a variety of different Starbucks drinks, and on the eatery side, you can order items with global inspiration like the French Bistro Burger, the Niçois-style salad, and the Madagascar Vanilla Milkshake. 
Fun insider fact, the booth seats in Connections Eatery have built-in USB ports and outlets so you can charge your phone while you eat. If you've remembered to bring a charging cable, that is. But there are also tables with wireless charging capabilities. When you're looking for a seat in the restaurant, seek out the long oval tables that seat eight or more people. They're typically overlooked by guests because they feel a bit like community seating, but in the middle of each of these tables is a raised shelf, and at each end of the shelf is a little phone charging logo. When you lay your phone on it just right, it'll wirelessly charge. Yes, the future is now. And as a last minute entry, Disney's DuckTales World Showcase Adventure finally popped up in Epcot on December 16th. This scavenger hunt was originally announced back in late 2019, but never seemed to happen, most likely due to the global pandemic. It's here. During this adventure, you will join Scrooge McDuck, his nephews and friends as they travel around World Showcase on a quacky quest to find the seven plunders of the world and return them to their rightful owners. The treasures are hidden in the World Showcase country pavilions, and each country has three assignments and one finale. The country pavilions with hidden treasures are Mexico, Norway, China, Germany, Japan, France, and the United Kingdom. Every mission takes approximately 25 to 30 minutes to complete. The adventure is available on the Play Disney Parks app and is completely free to experience, so make sure to have this app downloaded before your day in Epcot begins. Despite Epcot being a more relaxing park in comparison to Magic Kingdom, that doesn't mean it doesn't have its fair share of book solid reservations and super long lines. So let's figure out how you can get ahead of the crowds and not feel like the crowds are constantly getting ahead of you. Impossible goal number one, getting in line for Cosmic Rewind. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind uses a virtual queue system, meaning you must have a boarding group in the virtual queue to ride or buy a lightning lane. Confused? Let's backtrack for a second. Virtual queues are available through the My Disney Experience app and allow guests to reserve a space in line for the most popular and newest park attractions. This reserved space is referred to as a boarding pass. We've got a whole step-by-step -step post on the DFB website going over how to specifically pull this off, which I'll link down in the description below. But right now, let's talk about the basics to give you some of the best virtual queue strategies that'll help increase your chances of getting a boarding pass because virtual queues book up very quickly, sometimes in seconds. Tip number one, wake up early. Though boarding passes are distributed twice daily, once at 7 a.m., once at 1 p.m., you're gonna wanna try for that 7 a.m. pass first because if you get a group number before you enter Epcot, then you won't have to stress about getting one during your park day. For the 7 a.m. drop, you can grab boarding passes from wherever, even while you're still in your bed back at the hotel. But for the 1 p.m. drop, you have to be inside Epcot. Tip number two, confirm your party ahead of time. Instead of confirming your party right when the boarding groups drop at 7 a.m., you can make sure Disney knows who's riding with you up to an hour before in the My Disney Experience app. Beginning at 6 a.m., you can tap into the virtual queue and set your party, meaning the folks you're gonna ride with, so that you have fewer steps to worry about when boarding groups go live at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. On the app, under Join Virtual Queue, you'll find a button that says Confirm Your Party. Once you hit that button, the app will find the people who are linked to your account. You'll select each person that you wanna to add to your party and hit Confirm Party. Then you'll go back to the main Virtual Queue screen where you'll find more information about the next steps. When 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. hits, you can refresh the page and click Join Queue to get a boarding pass, and the rejoicing commences. Tip number three, disconnect from Disney's Wi-Fi and refresh My Disney Experience before the hour strikes. Disney World's complimentary Wi-Fi can be pretty spotty, especially when everyone's trying to get a boarding group at the same time. You may find working off your regular cell service to be easier than fighting against unpredictable Disney Wi-Fi. Tip number four, skip the boarding group process entirely and purchase an individual lightning lane to guarantee your place in line instead. We'll talk more about this process later on, so stay tuned. Now, important disclaimer ahead, there's a good chance Cosmic Rewind may switch over to a regular physical queue system later in 2023, especially when Tron Light Cycle Run opens up in Magic Kingdom in spring. So stay on top of all things Cosmic Rewind before your trip so you'll know exactly what the rules are gonna be when you ride during your visit. By the way, best way to do that, join our newsletter. The link to sign up is in the description below. It's completely free and we will let you know immediately when we find out if Cosmic Rewind's rules are changing. Impossible goal number two, snagging a reservation for Space 220. Space 220 is a futuristic restaurant that opened in 2021, right before Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration, and it takes guests on a dining adventure 220 miles above Epcot. Though this highly immersive restaurant experience has been out for well over a year now, it continues to be the hardest to get dining reservation in the park. So let's look at how to improve your chances of space dining success. Tip number one, don't take advanced dining reservations for granted. 
You might have heard us talk about this before, but here we are again, practically begging you to remember to make your advanced dining reservations 60 days before your visit to improve your chances of getting a table. If you're gonna be at a Disney World Resort hotel, you get the added advantage of making reservations for up to 60 days in advance, plus the length of your hotel stay up to 10 days. The Disney website states that dining reservations go live 60 days before guests trips daily, starting at 6 a.m. Eastern. However, they've also been known to drop even earlier, around 5.30, or 5.45 Eastern. So if you don't mind being an early bird that day, like a really early bird, you might just catch that ADR worm. That was gross, sorry, you get it. Tip number two, try booking a table for the lounge. Though the Space 220 tables in the main dining room area do book up fast, Space 220's lounge will sometimes have lingering availability, and this is one of the only lounges in Disney World that you can book a reservation for. Now, this can give you the chance to check out the ultra-cool Centauri Space Station environment without having to order off the pricey prefix menu for lunch or dinner because the lounge menu is different and it's not prefix. Instead, you're going to be able to order from the full drink menu as well as order some flight bites, including options like Astro Deviled Eggs, the Blue Moon Cauliflower that everybody loves, and the Starry Calamari, which is pretty good. If the lounge is booked, you may still be able to grab a last minute seat at the Space 220 bar. You can always ask the host up front if bar seating is available or if you'll be able to wait in a standby line. Tip number three, dine during off times. Peak lunch and dinner time reservations will book up the fastest. So if you're bound and determined to eat off the main lunch dinner menu for this restaurant, try aiming to get a reservation for a really early lunch or a late lunch or early dinner, so like between 2 and 4 p.m. And tip number four, don't give up. Just because you didn't get a Space 220 reservation the first time around does not mean that more reservations won't magically open up later on. Keep checking on Disney World's website or the My Disney Experience app until the very last minute. For Space 220, as well as most Disney World restaurants, you can cancel a reservation up to two hours before your time to dine without being charged a cancellation fee, meaning you might find a last minute cancellation even on the day of your visit on the dining tip board. The dining tip board can also come in handy for other Epcot restaurants, letting you know when walk-up wait lists are available for other sit-down restaurants too. But we're gonna talk more about Epcot food and the dining tip board later on. Impossible goal number three, bypassing lines without Genie Plus. We got a whole section in this video that'll talk about Genie Plus and its line bypassing features inside Epcot, but let's just say you don't want to worry about all the extra expense for this premium travel planning tool. Is there still a way to get ahead of the lines without waiting hours for any particular one? Number one, use single rider. Did you know both Test Track and Soarin' Around the World have a third line you can enter into for a potentially much shorter wait? Well, Soren's isn't always open, but sometimes it is. Single rider lines can usually save you a lot of time and cut down your weight, but not always. Those waiting in the single rider line will be given a seat when there's an opening for just one more person. And that could either play to your advantage or disadvantage, depending on how many single riders the cast members will need at any given time. Also note that you'll be split up from your party on the ride if you choose single rider, but that may be worth it for your group if that means you don't have to wait 60 plus minutes. Tip number two to skip those lines, go to the back entrance of Epcot to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. There are two entrances to Epcot that you need to know about. You've got the main entrance at the front of the park, that'll lead you into World Celebration and Spaceship Earth, but you've also got the International Gateway entrance at the back of the park. That's gonna lead you into the World Showcase between the France and UK pavilions. If riding Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, AKA the trackless dark ride inside the France pavilion that opened up during Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration is a priority ride for you, then the International Gateway will give you the most direct access to the ride. The International Gateway will be steps away from the Epcot area resorts, and fewer people enter through that back entrance. So you'll be able to get to Remy's Ratatouille Adventure faster than everyone coming in the front. By the way, that International Gateway entrance is only a gondola ride away from the Skyliner Resorts, which we'll talk more in depth about later on. Tip number three, use Disney Resort perks. Speaking of hotels, don't forget about the early theme park entry benefit available for all Disney World Resort guests. That will allow you to enter any of the parks 30 minutes before the parks officially open for everyone else, which is a great way to get ahead of the lines before they get too wild during the day. And if you're planning on staying at a deluxe Disney World Resort, you'll get the added extended evening hours perk, which will allow you to stay in the parks up to two hours after they close to everyone else on select evenings. Extended evening hours when offered are usually available for Epcot on Mondays, but you can double check on Disney World's hours and events calendar on their website for exact days. 
Okay, I promised we'd get to this part. Now we're going to talk about what's coming soon. The wonderful world of Walcott doesn't exist for decoration's sake. There's still a lot of construction going on within the park that depending on when you visit, you may miss out on entirely or you may just be one of the first to see it live and in person. Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, is going to open in Epcot in late 2023. This upcoming attraction is a walkthrough experience where guests can interact with different water-based features like playful fountains, lots of waterfalls, and a towering Tafiti keeping watch over it all. In fact, the 16-foot Tafiti just moved into the park not too long ago and she is looking fabulous, per usual. We're expecting the World Celebration area of Epcot to wrap up construction later in 2023 too, which means the addition of things like the Walt Disney Dreamer statue and the new home base for Epcot seasonal festivals over at Communicore Plaza and Hall. Communicore Plaza is going to be outdoors and have the space to host large-scale concerts or more intimate performances that will extend out into nearby gardens. And Communicore Hall will be indoors and hold festival offerings like a demonstration kitchen, a mixology bar, and an exhibition and gallery space. The fan favorite Epcot character Figment, who holds just as much charm and whimsy as he does imagination, will be meeting and greeting park guests by the end of 2023 again. The Play Pavilion, defined by Disney as a digital metropolis that'll feature interactive experiences, games, entertainment, and hands-on activities that'll take place in the former Wonders of Life Pavilion, was originally set to open during Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration in 2021. But the Play Pavilion has since experienced several delays. The last we heard, the pavilion was still in the works since on July 14th, 2022, Disney filed a permit with Orange County for a general contractor package at the address matching the Wonders of Life building. But according to that permit, the expiration date of notice of commencement is set for December 31st, 2024. Though it's not impossible the Play Pavilion will open later in 2023, there is a good chance we may not see it open until 2024 or not at all. We'll keep you updated on that. And in a surprising turn of events, the current nighttime spectacular, Harmonious, will be replaced with a new show sometime in 2023. We don't have a lot of details around the new show yet, but keep checking back with us so we can tell you all about it when more details are finally released. The Epcot festivals may not necessarily be new, but the four different festivals will be returning throughout the year with possibly new eats and drinks for us to try. And maybe with new festival centers opening, we may see those demonstrations and seminars back again. Fingers crossed. We'll get into the festival details later on, but first let's swap some Epcot secrets. All right, here are some secrets you need to know. Don't worry, our secrets don't have to be kept secret. In fact, you're definitely gonna wanna share them with your group so you can be the MVP of your travel party. Secret number one, best places to escape. Epcot is a pretty easygoing park for the most part, but that doesn't mean it can't get downright overwhelming and peopley at times. If you're looking for a quiet place to escape, look for the hidden areas around the World Showcase pavilions. Several of the pavilions have side exhibits that not only highlight interesting information and artifacts surrounding different parts of their respective country's culture, but they also provide a tranquil and air-conditioned escape from the theme park crowds. Exhibits include areas like the Inside Shanghai Disneyland Resort exhibit in the China Pavilion, the American Heritage Gallery exhibit inside the American Adventure Pavilion, the Bijutsu Khan Gallery in the Japan Pavilion, and the Race Against the Sun exhibit in the Morocco Pavilion. The Canada Pavilion may not have an exhibit to escape to per se, but it does have a huge display of large mountainous boulders and waterfalls which you can see toward the back of the pavilion. It's usually pretty peaceful there and very picturesque too. Nobody goes back there because they don't really know it's there. You'll also find quiet places to relax in the back of the UK pavilion, as long as there isn't a band playing in the gazebo, that is. This English garden area can be a great spot to stroll around or pop a squat for a bit, and there's a fun little hedge maze for your kids. And just outside the World Showcase, located steps away from Journey into Imagination with Figment, is the Pixar Short Film Festival. This place is a great area to retreat to for three solid reasons. One, cute Pixar films, two, air-conditioned theater, and three, seats. And by the way, nobody ever goes to this either, so it's an easy escape. Secret number two, the best places for a caffeine fix. Gotta have that cup of joe to keep you energized around this massive park. Here are our favorite places to grab a cup or two. Kringla Bakery Og Cafe in the Norway Pavilion has one of our favorite coffee concoctions of all time, the frozen Viking coffee. It's made with Bailey's Irish cream and Kimura coffee liqueur with coffee chocolate sauce and garnished with coffee chocolate crunch. 
The Connections Cafe, as we stated earlier, is your one-stop shop for all things Starbucks, but be warned this will be the busiest coffee destination of the bunch. The Joy of Tea kiosk in the China Pavilion serves an alcoholic beverage called Tipsy Ducks in Love. This is a coffee drink made with bourbon, black tea, coffee, cream, and chocolate. You're more than welcome to get it without the bourbon at a cheaper cost. And let's not forget Joffrey's. You got five different Joffrey's locations located around the park and outside of it too. The first one is located right outside the park entrance. The next is in Royal World Discovery near the area that houses Test Track and Mission Space. Then you've got one in the World Showcase Promenade and another between the United Kingdom and Canada pavilions. And the last one is at the American Adventure Pavilion. Each location offers something a little different, so make sure to scope out those menus before making any final decisions. You're also going to find specialty drinks here for all the festivals. Secret number three, the rotating beacons of magic. What does that mean, AJ? Hold on, we're going to explain. <laughs> one of the best things to come out of the Disney World 50th anniversary celebration was the introduction of the beacons of magic. All four park icons received a special nighttime transformation with lights and projections to bring each of the beacons to life once the sun sets. But our all-time favorite beacon of magic is Spaceship Earth. The colors are constantly shifting and morphing across that giant golf ball at any given time. And better yet, Spaceship Earth also shows nightly beacons of magic light shows that play every 15 minutes. There's the standard beacon of magic show, but there's also the festival specific ones too. Throughout the year, we saw the Muppets Rainbow Connection during Festival of the Arts, Pocahontas' Colors of the Wind during Flower and Garden Festival, Beauty and the Beasts be our guests during Food and Wine Festival, and Olaf's Frozen Adventures when we were together during the Festival of the Holidays. If you want to see one of these festival-specific Beacon of Magic shows during your visit, but a different one happens to be playing while you're sitting in front of Spaceship Earth, just wait another 15 minutes for the next show. They like to take turns. Secret number four, character meet and greet locations. Magic Kingdom doesn't hog all the characters. You can see several favorite friends around Epcot too. In World Celebration, you can see Disney pals like Pluto and Goofy near Epcot's main entrance, see Joy from Inside Out inside Imageworks, Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph is at Imageworks as well, and Winnie the Pooh is outside near the Imagination Pavilion, often chasing butterflies with his handy dandy butterfly net. He never catches any. In World Nature, you can find Mickey at the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, and keep your eyes open for all sorts of characters meeting and greeting around the World Showcase, including Donald Duck in the Mexico Pavilion, Anna and Elsa are at the Royal Summer House in the Norway Pavilion, Mulan is in the China Pavilion, Snow White's in Germany, Jasmine is in the Morocco Pavilion, Belle and Princess Aurora are in the France Pavilion, Alice and Mary Poppins, they're at the back of the UK Pavilion, and Minnie Mouse is at the World Showcase Plaza Gazebo. Let's move on to the elephant in the room, Genie Plus. Yay or nay for Epcot. In our Magic Kingdom Ultimate Guide video, we talked about how useful having those Disney Genie Plus and individual Lightning Lane premium planning tools could be while navigating that park. But how do we feel about Lightning Lanes in Epcot? Are these line bypassing services worth it or should you bypass those bypassing services? Honestly, our worth it scale seems to tip into the nay category for Epcot mostly. But let's back up a little bit. Lightning Lane services are still a fairly new feature for the Disney parks and we got a whole video going in depth with how they work if you want to learn more. But the most important thing you'll need to know for what we're talking about now is how Genie Plus and individual lightning lanes are different from each other. Disney Genie Plus is a premium service that starts at 15 bucks per person per day but has surge pricing that fluctuates on a daily basis. And this daily price allows you to bypass the general standby lines for most of the rides and enter into a much shorter lightning lane queue. But for individual lightning lanes, you'll have to pay a separate, also fluctuating charge to select lightning lane return times for the most popular attractions. These ones won't be featured on the regular Genie Plus lineup. In Epcot's case, your individual lightning lane will be for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. The cost to ride Cosmic Rewind can vary by date, but more commonly we've seen it range between $14 and $17 per person per ride. Now this is where a Lightning Lane purchase could potentially be very, very worth it. ILLs tend to be easier to secure than boarding passes. I'm not saying individual Lightning Lanes still won't run out quickly, but just a little less quickly, like maybe not in seconds, since you do have to pay for them. So if you don't want to stress over getting a virtual queue spot, you can still secure your space in line by going the premium route instead. But keep in mind this is an awfully pricey endeavor for just one ride through, especially if you have a larger family. A family of four using the individual lightning lane could end up costing between $56 to $68 plus. 
So it's definitely something you'll want to discuss with your group before you've got to make that decision the morning of your Epcot visit. Okay, now for Genie Plus. There are 11 attractions total that have lightning lanes. I'll put them up on the screen now. If you've never been to Epcot before, then this could look like a hefty list that would make Genie Plus worth your while. But let me add to this list real quick and show you what the usual wait times for each of these experiences tends to be. Now, yes, these numbers can definitely be lower or higher depending on the time of year you visit, but this is the typical average of what our reporters come across after frequenting the parks every day. So really, the longest lines where Genie Plus would be the most worth your time are with Test Track, Frozen Ever After, and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. But again, if you play your cards right, you still won't need Genie Plus to cut down your waits. You can hit up Remy's first thing in the morning with your early theme park entry benefit if you enter through the International Gateway, or book it across the park from the front entrance. Then you can make your way around to the Norway Pavilion to hit up Frozen Ever After. And after that, even if the Test Track line is looking a little too long for your liking, you can always take your chances with the single rider line or wait until the evening right before the park closes. As long as you get in the queue while it's still open, even if it's 10 minutes before the park closes up shop for the night and there's still a 45 minute wait, you'll still be able to ride after the park closes. All that being said, this is your trip. And if you wanna pay for Genie Plus, because A, your kids hate waiting in any kinds of lines, B, you hate waiting in any kinds of lines, C, you've done the research and know how the system works, and or D, you're visiting during peak seasons and know that all the lines will be stupid busy, then by all means, buy the Genie of the app. You can purchase Genie Plus starting the day of your visit, beginning at midnight. And as long as you purchase it before 7 a.m., you'll be golden since 7 a.m. is when the lightning lanes go live for you to make reservations. Individual lightning lanes also go live for you to reserve and purchase starting at 7 a.m., but only if you're a Disney Resort Hotel guest. Otherwise, you won't be able to purchase an individual lightning lane until the park opens. Now, that's another real benefit for staying in a Disney Resort hotel, because for very, very popular rides, including potentially Tron here coming up in 2023, I know that's Magic Kingdom and not Epcot, those individual lightning lanes could sell out by the time the park opens, because all the hotel guests already grabbed them at 7 a.m. Now, I know that's lots to keep in your noggin, but that's what our Ultimate Lightning Lane video is for. Now, here's a brand new Disney Genie Plus tip for you to keep in your back pocket. Lightning Lane reservations can only be made for one ride and one returning time frame at a time, meaning you can only make another Lightning Lane selection when you use the one you're currently holding on to, 120 minutes have passed since you made your last Lightning Lane selection, or you canceled your previous Lightning Lane. At least that's how it used to be. Now you can modify Lightning Lane reservations without having to cancel them. This adds a lot of flexibility to the process since you don't have to worry about canceling and rebooking. You can also change specific members within your party who are attached to the Lightning Lane reservation before submitting any changes. That means if someone in your party decides that test track is too intense for them, you should be able to adjust your Lightning Lane reservation and remove them. So while you can still only hold one Lightning Lane reservation at a time unless you're using that 120 minute rule, you can modify those reservations and it gives it a lot more flexibility. All right, if you've been following the DFB channel for a while now, then you know about our love for all things Epcot festivals. Epcot is the only park out of the four that has seasonal festivals, and these festivals add a unique variety of experiences to your everyday Epcot trip, ranging from concerts, limited edition merchandise, fun activities, epic theming, and oh yeah, tons of food booths around the entire world showcase. I already briefly mentioned what each of the festivals are earlier on, but let's do a quick refresher and look at some projected 2023 three festival dates and some big tips. Festival of the Arts is the only festival we know exact dates for for 2023 per the release of this video, and it'll run between January 13th and February 20th, 2023. Flower and Garden Festival tends to start up in early March and has been extending up until July 4th. Food and Wine Festival follows shortly after kicking off in mid-July and running until mid-November. And Festival of the Holidays finishes out the year covering the last half of November and on throughout December. So when's the best time to hit up any particular festival? Well, we tend to like visiting during the weekdays versus the weekends, since the weekends get packed out. But the busiest you'll see the festivals is during their kickoff week and their final week before they wrap up for the season. When the hype dies down for any particular one, usually the crowds die down too. So try aiming your festival visit toward that mid-fest sweet spot. Choose the weekdays and choose as soon as Epcot opens because that's how you're going to avoid the most lines. Our favorite part of the festivals, if you couldn't already guess, is the dozens of different food booths available during each one. For each new fest, the DFB team and I release our Best of the Fest YouTube videos, which showcase our favorite eats and drinks and booths. 
And since several of our favorite things often reappear year to year, you're more than welcome to check out those videos now to get a head start on planning. Now, notice how I said our favorite festival offerings often reappear, not always reappear. There's always a good chance that a festival favorite won't come back in the following year, so you wanna make sure to try any items you really want when you have the chance instead of putting them off for a year later because you never know when or if they'll ever return. Whatever your must-eats and drinks of the fests end up being, make sure to order them earlier in the day rather than later on. Festival items can run out and will run out if they're popular enough or if the booths don't have enough supplies or ingredients to keep them stocked throughout the day. So the earlier you can order those, the more likely you'll be able to get them before they're gone. During the Epcot festivals, you'll also be able to watch live performances at the America Gardens Outdoor Theater in the American Adventure Pavilion. Festival of the Arts hosts the Disney on Broadway concert series. Flower and Garden Festival hosts the Garden Rocks concert series. Food and Wine hosts the Eat to the Beat series and Festival of the Holidays shakes up the concert series lineup with their candlelight processional featuring a celebrity narrator telling the Christmas story alongside a full choir and orchestra. For the most part, the concert series aren't too terribly hard to find seats for, but the candlelight processional has a tendency to book up fast, which is why the festival dining packages are nice to have around. Festival dining packages provide guests with lunch or dinner for select Epcot restaurants and guaranteed seating for those Epcot festival performances. These can be very useful for candlelight, but also I know I said the other events don't book up too fast, but if you've got a really popular band coming to play, you might want to grab a dining package. Dining packages range in price depending on which restaurant you choose, but these were the prices we were seeing for the 2022 candlelight processional packages. The candlelight processional dining packages do go fast, so you want to make sure you're keeping on top of things if this is something you're going to want to invest in for your 2023 Epcot holiday visit. Fortunately, drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash Epcot 2023 for your complete and free copy of today's ultimate Epcot list, and you'll also automatically be signed up for our newsletter, which will keep you in the know about when you can start making reservations for dining packages for all the festivals and inform you about the latest Disney discounts, news updates, planning suggestions, and more. Okay, one more noteworthy festival-related note I want to mention before moving on, and that's merchandise. Festival-specific merch is a fickle thing. It can hang around long enough to become discounted on the store shelves, or it can sell out after making you wait in a six hour line. If you know there's a certain festival item that you're gonna really want while you're there, try buying it on the Shop Disney website first. Not only could it be listed at a cheaper discounted price online versus what you'd find in the parks, but sometimes festival items go online even before they hit the Epcot shelves. So it's always worth doing a bit of online browsing first, just in case you hit the festival merchandise jackpot. Moving on to the best eats and drinks in Epcot. Oh man, talking about everything you can eat in Epcot could be a video in and of itself. And actually it is. We ranked all the Epcot restaurants just last year. So you should go check that out next. But for now, we're going to give you the quick version of our favorite Epcot restaurants. Now for a more detailed list of recommendations, price ranges, and tips and tricks for all the Epcot restaurants and all the Disney World restaurants, you can order our 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining on dfbstore.com, which is going to give you everything we know about dining in Disney World. Make sure to type in the code YouTube for savings on your overall purchase. We're going to start with on the go in Epcot. If you want something to eat in a Jiffy, these are the quick service restaurants we tend to frequent most often. Regal Eagle Smokehouse is a fast casual restaurant in the American Adventure Pavilion that celebrates the most popular regions of American barbecue and serves up craft brews on tap. You can try any of the four house recipe sauces alongside options like Memphis dry rub pork ribs, sliced Texas beef brisket, Kansas City half smoked chicken, and of course the whole thing is presided over by Sam the Eagle because of course it is. Don't forget to try all the sauces by the way, those are amazing. Connections Cafe and Eatery I already talked about earlier, but what I want to add to its description now is how you can cut down on your Connection Eatery wait time. Many of Epcot's quick service locations, not including the festival booths, have the mobile order option, which you can find on the My Disney Experience app under the Dining Tip Board link. So if you don't want to wait in a physical line for your food, plan to mobile order instead. We've got whole step-by-step -step posts that'll help you walk through how to use this mobile order feature, which I'll link down in the description because it can be a little bit tricky if you haven't done it before. 
before. Léal Boulangerie Patisserie is a charming bakery tucked into the back of the France Pavilion, and it's packed with tasty treats, both sweet and savory, all for reasonable prices by Disney standards. Léal doesn't offer mobile orders, so you'll want to get in line for this one before the lunch and dinner rush. Sunshine Seasons offers a variety of options in a food court style fashion within the Land Pavilion, making it a solid choice for bigger groups who need a wider range of menu selections. And don't forget to check out the dessert case here. You've got several treats unique to this location, including the turtle brownie, the lemon chiffon with blueberry mousse, and lots of rotating seasonal options depending on what time of year you're visiting. The pastry chefs here do some really cool stuff. And of course, we love tasting our way all around the different festival booths. If you want a more in-depth look into what each of the different festivals has available during your trip, and you want recommendations, price ranges, and full-color pictures, you can always check out our festival guides at dfbstore.com. All right, next you might need to sit down for a spell and enjoy some good table service food. Epcot's got plenty of signature dining and sit-down dining that can provide just that, so let's talk about that next. Rose and Crown Dining Room is a cozy little restaurant in Epcot's UK Pavilion that offers a hearty, delicious menu of British favorites, including shepherd's pie and fish and chips. I can never keep myself from getting the bangers and mash here. I love that. Now, you should get an advanced dining reservation for Rose and Crown. It's first come, first serve over at the Rose and Crown Pub, though, where you can order yourself an Imperial Pint or one of the many pub blends. Via Napoli in the Italy Pavilion offers authentic Neapolitan wood-fired pizzas, pasta, and meat dishes. And fun fact, the mass Massive wood ovens here are named Vesuvio, Etna, and Stromboli after three active volcanoes in Italy. La Cellier Steakhouse is a signature dining experience in the Canada Pavilion themed to look like you're dining in a Canadian wine cellar. Here you're going to find high quality steaks, hearty appetizers like the famous Canadian cheddar cheese soup, and signature poutine dishes. And Garden Grill, located in the Land Pavilion, is a character dining experience where you're going to get to meet Mickey, Pluto, Chip, and Dale. The food is served family style right at your table and features a really yummy selection of comfort foods that'll impress picky and adventurous eaters alike. Oh, and I need to let you know, this restaurant slowly rotates over the course of your meal because that's totally a thing. Meaning no matter which booth you're seated at, you'll have a view of the scenes from the Living with the Land attraction as you pass by. Now let's talk ultra fancy next. We're going to take our theme park dining experience up a notch. Monsieur Paul restaurant in the France Pavilion just reopened and now it's a prefix signature experience for adults only. You'll start with a cocktail as long as you're of age, then move on to the hors d'oeuvres appetizers. Next, you'll receive one fish course, followed by a palate cleanser of pear brandy and sorbet. After that, you'll get to choose a meat course, followed by a cheese platter, and then you'll wrap up your meal with dessert and assorted mini desserts served with a digestive cocktail. Needless to say, you won't leave here hungry. This whole experience is available for guests 10 and older and costs $195 per person. Takumi Te is the second ultra fancy dining experience in the park located over in the Japan Pavilion. This artisan style setting offers a new menu consisting of two omakase multi-course meal options. The first is an omnivorous meal at $250 per person, including the diner's choice of Japanese A5 Wagyu steak, roasted duck, or grilled Chilean sea bass. And the second meal option is for plant-based eaters for $150 per person. When it comes to snacks, you've got a lot of different snacky options to choose from in Epcot, but I think my all-time favorite place to grab a sweet treat is over at Caramel Kusha in the Germany Pavilion. This sweet smelling and tasting shop is all about the caramel treats from popcorn, butter bars, apples, cookies. Seriously, a lot of caramel is sold here daily. And of course, it's run by Werther's, which is why it's so good. And the best part, Caramel Kusha does have a mobile order option. So if the line's looking a little too intimidating for you, like it often does, feel free to make your purchase on the My Disney Experience app instead. APs, those are annual pass holders, can also get discounts here since it's considered to be a merchandise location, so that's a fun tip for you that could save you a little cash. Sometimes you're looking for more of an immersive dining atmosphere though, even if the food can sometimes be hit or miss. So here are our favorite themed restaurants in Epcot. Located inside Epcot's beautiful Mexico Pyramid, San Angel Inn offers an authentic Mexican riverside dining experience in the midst of a vibrant little Mexican village. While the food here has been inconsistent, it's also had really good moments and strong margaritas. I recommend the experience 
experience for the atmosphere alone, especially if you're celebrating something romantic like a honeymoon or anniversary. Akersu's Royal Banquet Hall in Epcot's Norway Pavilion is your chance to meet a lot of Disney princesses all at once. The all-you-can-eat family-style platters with options like Norwegian meatballs and chicken and dumplings are good, but clearly the princesses are the real draw here. Princesses can vary, but guests can typically look forward to meeting characters like Snow White, Jasmine, Belle, Princess Aurora, and Ariel, all in a truly royal castle-like setting. Sometimes Cinderella even shows up here, by the way. Now, you already know a little about Space 220 and how popular it is, but let me paint a clearer picture of this experience for you. Before your meal begins, you'll board an elevator that simulates real-time rocketing into orbit as you travel up, up, up to the Centauri space station hovering above the Earth. From there, you'll take in daytime and nighttime views of Earth while being surrounded by a full panoramic view of space. Yeah, cool stuff. Worth experiencing at least once. Beer Garden in the Germany Pavilion is a theater-style restaurant filled with long, family-style tables. Up on stage, German performers showcase authentic Oktoberfest numbers throughout the day, lederhosen and all. The full buffet features your favorite German dishes, including bratwurst, spätzle, and potato salad, and don't forget to wash it all down with a nice liter of beer. Lastly, we've got Coral Reef over in World Nature. Now, we're not huge fans of Coral Reef, but the massive picture windows looking into the giant indoor Living Seas Aquarium all the way around the dining room provide you with ever-changing scenery and endless entertainment, which may be just what you're looking for if you've got kids that can get a little restless during a sit-down meal. Now, one of the big questions I get asked about Epcot is where can I watch the fireworks while I'm having a meal? Well, some Epcot restaurants do have the unique vantage point that will give you views of the Epcot Nighttime Spectacular, which currently is harmonious but will change next year. La Hacienda de San Angel in the Mexico Pavilion is a waterfront restaurant specializing in fresh Mexican cuisine. The restaurant is all indoors but still offers up views of the World Showcase Lagoon and the evening fireworks thanks to those floor-to-ceiling windows. Right next door to La Hacienda is its quick-service sibling, La Cantina de San Angel. La Cantina also serves up Mexican favorites like nachos, empanadas, and churros, and the tables closest to the edge of the cantina offer a beautiful view of the World Showcase Lagoon. If you're lucky enough to score a table in the evenings, because this patio offers a great vantage point of the evening fireworks, but there are some folks who like to move in and stay there for hours waiting for the fireworks, so prepare for that. And Tokyo Dining over in the Japan Pavilion is a table service restaurant with fresh sushi and sashimi at very reasonable prices, again, in a Disney sense of the term reasonable. But Tokyo Dining has a gorgeous view of the World Showcase Lagoon as well. Try to make an evening reservation for an hour prior to the spectacular and savor your dessert with a show. Just note that there are only a few tables at Tokyo Dining that have a great view of the show. The others are not as good, so when you check in there, be sure to ask for a fireworks view table. They won't guarantee it, but they can try. And speaking of that, that's one of the only downsides to all of these restaurants I've just mentioned. You're not guaranteed a fireworks view. But if you want to guarantee a dinner with a fireworks show, Epcot does offer dinner packages for Harmonious too. You've got two options for dining packages that will guarantee you a great view of the show while you eat. The Rose and Crown Fireworks Dining Package offers a prefix meal, including an appetizer, an entree, a dessert platter, and unlimited beverages. During this meal, you'll be seated on the restaurant's outdoor patio. The Spice Road Table Dining Package, located in the Morocco Pavilion, includes your choice of two small plates, a dessert platter, and unlimited beverages. Since Spice Road Table serves Mediterranean small plates like hummus fries, spiced chicken, and grilled lamb kefta. Here, you'll be seated at the covered outdoor dining room in the Morocco Pavilion to enjoy the show. To make reservations, you can go on the Disney World website and start booking 60 days before your trip. Remember, you're going to have to book the actual dining packages for Rose and Crown in Morocco, not just a regular table, because they do have just regular tables available during the show as well. But only the dining package will guarantee you a view. So many guests enjoy drinking around the world escapades while meandering around the world showcase. But if you need a little extra guidance as to where the best drinks are located, we got you. It's hard to go wrong with any option at La Cava del Tequila inside the Mexico Pavilion. But what makes this little cozy corner so enticing is the fact that you can get your margs and tequila based drinks to go if the tables are already taken up which regularly happens because this place is hot stuff and even if you don't like beer you may very well like the chauffeur offer pink grapefruit hefweizen from Summerfest in the germany pavilion it's also available at beer garden if you want some grapefruit along with your poketoons 
The Tutto Gusto Wine Cellar in the Italy Pavilion offers wine flights, which generally come with three wines with fairly generous pours each. And this is a great little hideaway. Nobody knows about this place. Regal Eagle Smokehouse has several really good drink options, but our favorite might just be the frozen mint julep because mint juleps, that's why. The Grand Marnier Orange Slush from Le Vins de Chefs de France is a long-standing favorite of ours and is a mixture of Grand Marnier, rum, Grey Goose, and orange juice. And the frozen mint tea at Oasis Sweets and Sips in the Morocco Pavilion can be spiked with Bombay Sapphire Gin, making it a nice and refreshing treat during a hot day in the park. So we've ridden some rides, we've eaten some great food, we've had some drinks. Now it's time for more DFB Pro advice. I got a few Pro Epcot tips for you to keep tucked away in the crevices of your big wrinkly brain for safekeeping because those who want to hit up Epcot the smart way won't want to forget about these. Tip number one, getting place to place. Epcot has a few different transportation offerings available. One of those offerings is for a short trip across the World Showcase Lagoon. The Friendship Boats in Epcot take guests from the World Showcase to Future World and vice versa. That way, if you need to get to the other side of the park, but you also want to give your feet a break, you can just hop aboard and float across. You can also travel to and from Epcot via Friendship Boat from the Disney Resort docks located at Boardwalk Inn, Yacht and Beach Club, and the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Hotels. Now hold on, these deluxe resorts are important. Not not only will the Boardwalk Inn and Yacht and Beach Club provide you with friendship boat transportation, but they're also all part of the Epcot area resorts, meaning if you stay at one of these locations, you'll be only a few steps away from the International Gateway. The Swan and Dolphin is a more unique situation. It's still within walking distance of Epcot, but it also isn't owned directly by Disney. Instead, it's owned by Marriott, who partners with Disney to provide deluxe resort perks like the extended evening hours at a more moderate price point. Resorts along the Disney Skyliner route, including Disney's Pop Central, Art of Animation, Riviera, and Caribbean Beach have the unique advantage of being able to transfer over to Epcot as well as Disney's Hollywood Studios via that sky gondola, which can be a whole lot of fun and super convenient, unless you have a fear of heights or it's storming outside when it'll probably close. According to the Disney website, since the Disney Skyliner is the primary method of transportation to Epcot and Hollywood Studios from the Skyliner Resorts, there probably won't be buses to these two parks unless the Skyliner is not available due to poor weather conditions. That being said, we have also seen buses for Epcot and Hollywood Studios pop up at Art of Animation and Pop Century time and again when the Skyliner is in high demand to help get guests to the parks as quickly as possible and to break up the intense Skyliner lines. If you have someone in your party who really doesn't want to ride the Skyliner, talk to guest services or talk to your concierge at the hotel and see what your options are. So if you'd rather have a transportation option closer to the ground at all times, you may want to choose a resort that's not on the Skyliner route or plan on driving yourself to the park or investing in a ride share if you don't want to wait for the bus. Want to take a ride aboard the monorail to get to Epcot from your monorail resort? You can do that too. If you're staying on the monorail loop wrapping around the Magic Kingdom area, that's Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, Contemporary Resort, and Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, you'll just need to transfer monorail lines when you arrive at the Transportation and Ticket Center and get on the Epcot monorail and Instead. Tip number two, best views of Harmonious before it goes away. All right, I'm going to be real glum when Harmonious leaves Epcot, but you can bet I'm going to catch a few more shows before the nighttime spectacular wraps up for good. And here's where I'm planning to watch it from. Showcase Plaza between the Port of Entry and Disney Traders gift shops is the best angle of the show. We're talking front and center. This is the area that's going to get the most crowded leading up to showtime, but it really is hard to beat. So plan on staking out your spot here at least 15 to 20 minutes before the show starts. Outside the Norway Pavilion, along those railings right around World Showcase Lagoon, will give you a crystal clear picture of Harmonious with no extra obstructions unless you count other guests, of course. And behind Rose and Crown on either the right or left sides of the UK restaurant also provides some good Harmonious views. Then again, the area between the UK and France near the bridge has a large patio space where you can watch the show too, which you may prefer even more if you can't find any more space available. Tip number three, behind the scenes tours. Epcot has a handful of behind the scenes tours that are gonna give you a different park experience than you may have ever had before. The Behind the Seeds tour of the Land Pavilion is a 60 minute experience where you'll visit four living with the land greenhouses and the fish farm, while also learning plant growing techniques along the way. Epcot Seas Adventure Dive Quest is a tour for scuba certified guests to let you dive into Epcot's current free 5.7 million gallon saltwater aquarium, a place home to over 2,000 sea creatures, including, but not limited to, sea turtles, reef fish, stingrays, 
stingrays, and sharks. A backstage tour of the aquarium is also part of the experience. And the Epcot Seas Adventure Dolphins in Depth allows you to interact with Epcot's dolphins. This tour features an approximately 30 minute interaction with the dolphins, backstage views complete with the opportunity to learn about Disney World's dolphin care program, and training research sessions with marine mammal specialists. You can learn more about these tours on the Enchanting Extras collection page of the Disney World website or over on our website. Tip number four, the most unique Epcot threads you're gonna find. Ready to show off a whole new type of Epcot fashion to make sure your true love for all things Spaceship Earth and Figment is shown by all? Then head over to merch.dfbstore.com and check out our Epcot specific shirts, sweatshirts, and tanks available now. Not only are these shirts super stylish, biased but true, but they're also gonna be cheaper than the Epcot specific outfits you're gonna find at the park itself. Not biased just true. One last crucial bit of advice, my friends. Please, please, please don't forget to make your Park Pass reservations before you head to Epcot or any of the Disney World parks. Park Pass reservations are like seat saving at school. They make sure someone else can't take your spot in the park. Once you purchase your theme park tickets, Disney will redirect you to a new page where you'll make your Park Pass reservations. And don't worry, this second step of the ticket purchasing process is free. If you want a step-by-step guide on how to make Park Pass reservations, I'll link our post that does exist exactly that down in the description. If you plan on purchasing a ticket for just one day at Epcot and no other tickets beyond that, then good news, this Park Pass reservation will automatically be made for you. But also keep in mind that one day, one park tickets will have a surge price that's different than the typical fluctuating prices the parks usually experience. This is a brand new addition. Disney recently implemented that park-specific pricing for their one-day, one-park tickets, which means a one-day ticket to Epcot may cost more or less than, say, a one-day ticket to Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom on any particular date, depending on its popularity. But if you plan on making reservations for more than one park during your vacation, this type of park-specific pricing won't be something you need to worry about. Whatever the case may be, make sure to check the Disney World Park Ticket calendar before you buy your park tickets to see what price ranges and block out dates will look like when you you're planning on visiting. Epcot is one of those parks that'll give you something new to check out every time you visit, and it will also worm its way into your heart and become your favorite Disney park. I can say that based on experience. So keep checking back here with us as we continue to find new secrets, new food, new ways to explore Epcot's many different offerings and festivals and rides. And don't forget to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash Epcot2023 for a full PDF of everything we talked about today, completely free, right? in your inbox. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.